हमें नहीं जाना तुम्हारे मुल्क में खोलो करगिल का रास्ता खोलो हमारा तारीखी रास्ता जाएंगे अगर तुम रास्ते में टाउन पैदा करोगे तो हम करगिल जाके दिखाएंगे तुम्हें तुम्हें This video is from Gilgit Baltistan region in Pakistan occupied Kashmir and the protest that you just saw is against Pakistan various news reports surfacing on social media have stated that the local residents gathered in large numbers in Skardu to express anger and demand the release of a Shia leader Aga Bakir Husseini who had been taken into custody by the security forces during the protests they also said there will be a civil war and they will want to head to Kargil which is in India This is basically the people of Gilgit Baltistan hinting at a merger that they are interested in with India. In this video I'm not talking simply about Pakistan but a reflection of how one country till 1947 is today two polar opposite world. Remember Pakistan had spread terrorism in the Kashmir Valley for over 3 decades but now there is a miss world gathering being organized in peace in Srinagar and I hope with fingers crossed that may this peace prevail in Kashmir Valley. While Pakistan however is now getting a taste of its own medicine the discord spreading to its occupied areas importantly of citizens aiming to move toward the historical belt and of the region that connects them to India the shia leader's remarks in skardu sparked a controversy blasphemy was claimed sunni majority areas in pakistan erupted in counter aggressive protests and this is not the first time In January itself this year inhabitants of Gilgit Baltistan region protested and that was clearly reported by India Today and a lot of other newspapers Gilgit Baltistan demanding for their constitutional rights Since 2018 after promulgating the Gilgit Baltistan Order 2018 which replaced the Gilgit Baltistan Empowerment and Self Governance Order of 2009 massive protests have been breaking out in the Gilgit Baltistan region rallies organized demanding constitutional rights for their region Now it is turning fierce due to increased interference from Islamabad from restoration of subsidies on wheat and other food items load shedding illegal land grabbing exploitation of natural resources of the region that have been raised as demands by the residents the military establishment of pakistan continues to exert coercive claims over the land and the resources in gilgit baltistan region now this is not the first demand coming from inside pakistan's occupied areas from oppressed minorities asking for india's help and assistance hindu minorities flee to india already thousands of hindu pakistanis have been fleeing to india after facing persecution of the community from sindh region specifically abductions conversions every week there is a news about forced marriage of some young hindu or a christian girl who's married off to an older muslim man the horror systematic oppression of the minority community girls Some Hindu girls are as young as 12 to 13 years of age but are falsely shown as 18 on the nikah and conversion certificates. Most of these children have never even been able to meet their parents ever again in Pakistan. Remember this is a collective annihilation of the remaining Hindu community in Pakistan. Blasphemy becoming an easy tool to target and mob the Hindu and the Christian minorities. Many who have fled to India narrating horrific stories of survival are trying to pick up pieces again in India and trying to rebuild their life. But now even Muslim Pakistanis have started to shout slogans against the establishment. Rise of Balochistan against Pakistan. Balochistan has been a hotbed of insurgent activities for years and there are growing protests now against Pakistan government. Balochistan you must know is Pakistan's largest province by area providing 40% of Pakistan's gas production contains significant natural resources but the region remains the country's poorest sadly because its resources are regularly exploited local baloch never get the benefit of that worse the economic importance of balochistan for the chinese pakistan economic corridor which is the cpec has only added to the enduring political issues between balochistan and the national government Many Baloch have been spreading awareness around the world trying to also now form a government in exile trying to often put pressure for action against Pakistan most of this is often at a grave risk of their own life most Baloch vocal activists are forced to live in exile and those who can protest you will know there are a lot of disappearances that are constantly reported from Balochistan 
around 629 people were forcibly disappeared. 195 were killed extrajudicially, 187 were brutally tortured in 2022 as per Panke, which is the Human Rights Department of the Baloch National Movement. Rape, burning of houses is rampant. And now, the recently Prime Minister of Balochistan government in exile, Naila Kadri, even sought support from Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the United Nations for freedom from Pakistan's illegal occupation of Balochistan. Here's what she had said. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the BJP government have an opportunity today to rise in support of Balochistan at the United Nations, which they may not have tomorrow, thus also focusing on the timely action that is needed. Power cut crisis in Pakistan. Pakistan citizens already caught in the midst of an economic meltdown staged demonstrations in Rawalpindi, Peshawar, Lahore, Karachi, Khyber Pakhtunwa and other parts of the country. People are unwilling to accept that the International Monetary Fund is entirely to blame for this crisis. Many are seen drawing a parallel with India, where several states give 200 units of free electricity to its citizens. Freebies in Pakistan are only enjoyed by the ruling elite. For the power and cash-starved Pakistan, the power shocks are just the beginning. Young university students, protesters, have even mocked their government with posters saying, India has conquered the moon. Pakistan is unable to even provide basic electricity and fuel to the public at large. Let me give you an example. In Pakistan, electricity now costs about 50 Pakistan rupees per unit. Compare that to India, where it is 6 rupees. That's it, per unit, which is about, in Pakistan currency, about 14 PKR, even still so low. The food shortage in Pakistan is humongous. Enough visuals of food shortage, stampede, gunfire. Chaos is ruling Pakistan as they reel under inflation crisis. If Indian, for example, is paying, let's say, about 30 to 40 rupees maximum per kilogram for onions, Pakistanis have to pay 80 to 90 rupees, which is 200 PKR, so even double of what the Indians are currently paying. Let's talk about Pakistan's debt. They are short of foreign exchange. They are facing difficulties in covering one month's worth of exports. Reuters reported that Pakistan needs about $22 billion to fund the external payment obligations that it has, and a lot of debt likely coming from China. Pakistan may be asking the world and the International Monetary Fund for assistance today, while its citizens are asking India for help. It's a moment to ponder upon. Thank you for watching. This is for you to understand that despite a lot of problems still and clearly in India, how we are compared to Pakistan. And that comparison is significant to remember because it was one country at a time and over 75 years later, you can see the difference. But that's all from me. Stay tuned because coming up next, a special segment with Jessica Goyal. Will we have one nation, one election, uniform civil code or a women's reservation bill? We don't know that for now, but speculation is rife as the government has called for a special session between September 18 and 22, right after the G20 summit. But how is the session of India's parliament called? The Indian parliament consists of the president and the two houses, the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. The president, while being a constant part of the parliament, does not participate in the discussions of either houses. However, the president has constitutional authority to summon and discontinue the two houses of the parliament. The power to convene a session of the parliament lies with the government. This decision is made by the Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs, which is then formalized by the president who summons the MPs for a session. India does not have a fixed parliamentary calendar. Traditionally, parliament meets for three sessions in a year, the budget session, monsoon session and the winter session. The constitution under Article 85 mandates that parliament should meet at least twice a year and the gap between two sessions should not be exceeding six months. Now, there have been special sessions called in before this too. In August 1992, parliament met for the first time after a midnight special session to mark the 50th anniversary of the Quit India or Bharat Chodo movement. A special session of the parliament was called from 26th August to 1st September 1997 on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of India's independence. On 26 November 2015, a special special session was held to celebrate the 125th birth anniversary of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The session aimed at honouring his invaluable contribution in drafting the Indian constitution. On June 30, 2017, at a glittering special midnight session of the parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi led India to its biggest indirect tax reforms, the GST. And now, only weeks after a heated monsoon session, we are in for a special session. With no specific agenda, only time can tell what it will entail. That's all that we have for today. Thank you for watching. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mode.